What's going on everyone? Welcome to our must avoid draft bus video. Today, I will showcase 5 players that we think you should avoid in your fantasy drafts. Just a reminder to our viewers, we have officially launched our website. The link will be in the description. We have some amazing articles and our player and goalie projections are also available. Please feel free to leave any feedback on our articles and if you have any questions for this season, please refer to our fantasy discussion thread. Now let's hop over to our player of the day. In this segment, I will give you a random stat that's associated with the player, and in the comment section below, it is your job to figure out who that player is. The random stat today is, since 2018, this player has 275 penalty minutes, ranking first over this time. Who is this player? Leave your answers in the comment section below. Our first must avoid player on this list is Brent Burns of the San Jose Sharks. Now, don't get me wrong, Burns will always have fantasy value while he's in the league and healthy because of his insane shot numbers. But Burns struggled last season, and there are a few variables that I'll outline to why the regression could continue for Burns. The first factor is age. Burns is turning 35 this season, and in the NHL, players start to dwindle out of their prime at around age 30. Burns has had success in his 30s, but we feel that this is around the time that it becomes difficult for Burns to keep up. The second factor is that the Sharks are going to struggle this season. San Jose lacks the depth they used to have, and they have no goaltending. Burns will be playing more minutes in the defensive zone, and he's not a very good defender, and this is shown by his minus 22 rating last season. The last factor is that he will still be competing with Eric Carlson, and having them both on defense makes it difficult for Burns to maximize his point production. You can still take Burns in your draft, but he's currently being taken in the second or third round. Try and look to take Burns in the late fourth round and beyond. The second player to avoid in your draft is Braden Holpe of the Vancouver Canucks. Holpe signed with Vancouver in the offseason for two years in hopes that he can regain some of that elite form he had long ago. He has seen significant regression over the last three seasons, his lowest goals against average in that time being 282, which is well below league average. Last season is where Holpe really struggled. He ended the year with an 897 save percentage, and this is the first time in his career that he was below 900. A change of scenery for any player can be beneficial in their career, but for Holpe, moving to the Canucks seems to be a disaster in the making for him. Let me break down the defensive stats for Vancouver in comparison to Washington. Vancouver gave up the 6th most shots against last season, in comparison to Washington's 26th most. Vancouver had the 7th highest Corsi against, compared to Washington's ranked 25. Lastly, Vancouver gave up the 3rd most scoring chances against, compared to Washington's ranked 21. Holpe struggled on an above average defensive team, and is now playing on a team that ranks in the bottom of the league for defensive stats. Holpe is currently being taken around the 10th round in some leagues, but in my opinion, he should be avoided altogether. The next player that you should be avoiding in your drafts is Mark Giordano of the Calgary Flames. The 2018 Norris winner has basically defied the odds for athletes. He was an average player throughout his youth and his prime, but as he got older, he seemed to get better. But this wasn't the case last year. At age 36 last season, Giordano really struggled. Coming off of a Norris season where he put up 74 points and boasted a plus 39 rating, there was high hopes for Giordano this season. 2019 seemed to be a turning point for the never-aging Giordano, where he struggled immensely, putting up 31 points in 60 games and had a plus 2 rating. He does see a lot of time on ice, but we think that this year, his time on ice will begin to decrease. With players like Rasmus Anderson and Noah Hannafin beginning to step in bigger roles, we expect Giordano to take a step back this season. His role in the top power play unit is likely going to be taken over, and this significantly hurts his value. The current rankings for ESPN hasn't been drafted in the 4th or 5th round, and given our analysis on Giordano this season, we feel he should be drafted somewhere around the 10th round and beyond. Jamie Benn is the next player on our list that we feel you should be avoiding in your drafts. Similar to Holpe, Ben has seen significant regression over the last three seasons. In 2017, Ben had 79 points, but followed that up in 2018 with only 53. Last season was the worst of his career, where he had just 39 points in 69 games. Ben will be turning 32 this season, and he still may have some gas left in the tank. 
but Dallas has some young players like Denis Gurionov and Rupe Hintz that are coming up and are eager to compete for top line minutes. Tyler Sagan's current injury status has him out until at least April, and this only plays a negative effect on Ben's value this year. Ben is currently being drafted in the 8th or 9th round in some drafts, but we think he shouldn't be considered anywhere inside the top 100. The last player that we think you should avoid drafting is Dominic Kubalik of the Chicago Blackhawks. Kubalik had a great season last year, breaking out for 30 goals in his first full campaign with the Blackhawks. Now don't get me wrong, Kubalik is a great player and had a strong rookie season last year, but with the injury to Jonathan Tays and Brandon Saad being traded to the Avalanche, Kubalik now sees himself on a completely new line. Daily Faceoff currently has Kubalik on a line with Pius Suter and Andrew Shaw. Suter is 24 and has yet to play a game in the NHL, and Andrew Shaw is a grinder that has put up one 20 goal season in his career. The only bright spot for Kubalik this season is we still think he'll be given an opportunity to play on the top power play. This is the only place that he'll be seeing consistent scoring opportunities. Besides their first line, the Blackhawks are going to struggle this season. And unless Kubalik proves that he can be effective on a weak line, he is someone you should avoid altogether. That'll do it for a must avoid players list. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.